Hi, it's Mr. Zarzak. We're back down in my basement, which means it's time for another episode of Physics Underground. In today's episode, we're going to be covering lenses. That's right. Lenses. Ooh, lenses. Ah. Lenses. All right, so let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, so first I wanted to give you a quick overview of the lab setup. Uh, if you watched our video on the Curve Mirror Lab, uh, you'll see that a lot of this looks very familiar. It's a very similar setup, except instead of mirrors, now we're using lenses, okay? So the, the first thing I want to show you is the lens that you're going to use for the majority of this, okay? So you saw this at the beginning. This is the this is a converging lens. It's also known as convex. The convex part is its shape. You can see that it's thicker in the middle, okay? Its behavior is converging. Uh, a little bit later on in the lab, I'll show you what the, the opposite, this is the diverging lens, okay? Uh, it's hard to see on this, but it's, but it's cut so that it's curved, so that it's actually thinner in the middle, okay, than it is on the edges. I don't know if you can see when I, when I pinch, okay, the, the tips of my fingers recess because the thinnest part of the glass is in the middle, okay? So again, this is concave diverging, this is convex converging, this convex converging lens, this is what you're going to be using for uh, the majority of the lab. It sits in this little lens holder here that's right in the middle. I've got two meter sticks and I've got the, the lens positioned right in between the two of them. So what we wanna do is we're gonna consider this location to be like the origin. This is location zero, all right? Uh, this, ob this is gonna be our object. It's, I've got a little light bulb here to make it brighter for when we get the lights to turn down, but this is that little focus ghost that we used in the curved mirror lab. Uh, and so when we measure, it's the distance from the lens to the object. We call it the object distance, okay? So it's however far in centimeters from the lens to here. Over on the other side, okay, I've got this little blank note card and it's sitting on the meter six so we can move it around. This is my image screen, okay? So, what, so very similar to what we did in the curved mirror lab, we're gonna set the object distance to specific locations. So we say, okay, you know, it's 20 centimeters away, it's 40 centimeters, it's 60 centimeters, it's some specific distance away from the lens. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the location of the image screen until we get a focused image. Okay, that's why we wanna move this back and forth. And so when we get it into focus, it's the distance from the lens to the car, that's what we call our image distance. So this is DI, image distance. And this is object distance, DO, from the object to the lens. Okay, so let's actually get into it so you can see what you're gonna see in the lab. So I have the light on, shining light on my little focus ghost here, and that's just to get as much light bouncing off that object as possible. And then on the left side of the screen, you can see the lens. Okay, so I'm gonna switch angles so that we can focus more on the image screen. Okay, what I need to do to get that image into focus. So hold on one second. Okay, so let's see where we need to move the card or the image screen in order to get the image into focus. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, you can start to see some of the red and a little bit of the lettering. Our image is pretty small, but you can see that the brightness from the light bulbs up here at the top because this image is inverted. And just for fun, I'm just gonna jump over here and take the card away and instead put my face in here. So hopefully this will show up on video. You can see, you can see my eye, you can see my nose, you can see my mouth being projected onto that screen. Okay, so we're producing a real inverted image. Pretty cool. All right, so then now that with the, with the lab actually set up and the image in focus, Okay, so again, the distance from the ghost back to the lens, that's my object distance. And then over here, this is where I had to put the card to get into focus. So this shorter distance here, this would be the image distance. It's all relative to the lens. All right, so now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna move the object closer to the lens. So this is gonna be a smaller object distance. Okay, and when I do that, the, the image on the screen is now out of focus. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then I'm gonna refocus it so that we can see the difference in the image that we get. All right, so the only thing I've moved now is the camera and you can see that the, the image on the screen is really blurry. There's not much of an image at all. So I'm just gonna take that card, I'm gonna move it around, see if I've moved forward, it gets more out of focus. So I'm just gonna bring it back. And that looks pretty good. All right, you can start to make out the letters. It's a lot clearer now. Because honestly, the, the image, is, it's gotten bigger, okay? It's larger on the card. Our card, I'll do another trial just so that you can see it. It's still inverted, so we've got a real inverted image being projected onto a screen. Um, I'll try to slide my face in there again, so just so you can see. Hopefully you can see my eye and see my mouth wiggling around in there. All right, so let's do one more trial. 
All right, so this is exactly where we just were in terms of this is my object distance right here. So from the object back to the lens, right? Image distance is right here. All right, so we're gonna do one more trial. And I'm not collecting data, this is just more qualitative. You'll get the data all right, when you do the lab. So I'm just gonna move this forward. Okay, and then my image is now out of focus again on the card, so let me show you that, and then we'll refocus the, the image screen to get our image. All right, so all right, the, what we got on the screen is out of focus, so we're just gonna adjust this. Have to move it pretty far back. But you can see how big those letters have gotten. The, the image won't even fit on the screen anymore. Okay, so there's a relationship there as, as the object distance is getting smaller, all right, the image is getting larger and the image is actually getting farther and farther away. So pretty cool. All right, the image in all cases remains inverted. You can see the U is upside down. Okay, and you can see just a little bit of the red on the bottom over here. That's actually the, the bottom or the bottom of the circle from the ghost. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a quick recap of those three trials, just so that you can see how object distance and image distance relate to one another. So I've reset to those initial conditions, all right, where I've got my object very far away all right, from my lens, and this is where I need to put the card to get it into focus. I know you can't see it on the camera now, but I can see it on the card, the little upside down ghost is in focus, okay? So then if I take and I move my object closer, okay, so that's a pretty significant shift. Okay, well then in order to get the image into focus, here, let me find it real quick. Okay, right about there. So I had to move the card backwards. So when, when the object distance got smaller, the image distance got larger. Okay, and that trend continues. If I make that image distance pretty small, or excuse me, that object distance, pardon me. So from the ghost to the lens, that's now pretty tiny. Then that image distance in other words, to get this into focus, which is right, okay, it's way back here, so the image distance gets a lot larger, all right? So there's the relationship, and you're actually going to derive that graphically and write an equation in the lab for it. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you, so hold on, let me switch the camera angles again. All right, so hopefully you can see this. I've now got the, the object really close to the lens, all right? And there comes a point where if I get the object too close to the lens, no matter how close or how far away I put the card, I never really get much of anything, okay, other than just we can see that there's light coming through the lens, all right? And so what's happened here is, is that the object distance has now gone inside the focal point or the focal length of the lens. So if you remember back from curved mirrors, curved mirrors had focus points and focal lengths. Lenses do too, all right? We're just inside of it now. All right, the one difference with lenses versus mirrors is because lenses refract because they're transparent, they have focal lengths on both sides. They can be used either direction. All right, so anyways, we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Um, I wanna show you now what happens in terms of the image. Um, we can't project it onto a screen, so that means that image is no longer a real image, but that doesn't mean that we cannot use this converging convex lens in any way. In fact, um, you're probably most familiar with this application where we put objects closer to the lens than the focal length. So let me show you what the image of that looks like real quick. So hold on. Okay, so it was easier for me to show this to you with the lights on. I actually took the light bulb away. It's just sitting on the table here. And I've just got my little ghosty guy set up on a stand. And he's only about 10 centimeters away from the lens. So that's where he was before. Um, so I just took him off there just because it's easier for, get my, for me to get my camera down in here. All right, I wasn't able to project the image onto the screen, but yeah, look at that. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, you can see that uh, what we're getting is now, look at the difference in the size of the lettering. Okay, and we're also right side up. So what we are now looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is a virtual image that can only be seen when looking through the lens that is right side up and magnified. Okay, and so we get the exact same behavior for the converging lens as we did for the converging mirror, the difference is, is that in order to do this, we take advantage of the convex shape for the lens, whereas we needed that concave shape for the mirror. All right, pretty neat. So the type of image that we get with a converging lens really depends on whether or not the object is inside of or beyond the focal length. So how do we determine the focal length of the lens? Well, 
in a lab, we can do it in the same two ways that we did it with the curved mirror lab. So I'm going to show you both really quick. All right, so I have my, my lens. I've taken away the light bulb and just put the image screen, and I've shifted around the table because far away on the other end of my basement, I have a flashlight shining towards the lens. Okay, so I'm going to take and turn off the lights so that you can see what happens uh, in terms of what comes through the lens and how we find that focal length. All right, so I have the camera zoomed in and dimmed the lights in the room. You can see the lens here and then the, the note card, which is my image screen. If I take and I move this forward, you see that ball like it's smaller, 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 and eventually it passes a point where it starts to get bigger again. Okay, and so to find the focal point, I literally just have to find where that light is the most focused and it looks like right about somewhere in there it's about as small as I can get it okay and then what's happening here is because the flashlight is so far away the only light that reaches the lens is essentially all traveling in the same direction or parallel to itself and so the lens is going to refract all that all to a single point that we call the focus point and so if I measure the distance from the lens to where the image screen is that's what we call the focal length it's the length from the lens to the focus point all right so that's the first method that we can use to determine focal length. Now I'm going to show you another. All right, so for the second way that we measure the focal length, all right, is that we take advantage of, kind of like with reflection, if, if I can see you in a mirror, you can see me, all right, well, this, this rule of refraction, Snell's law goes both ways too, or at least I can calculate both ways. And what I mean by that is if that light coming in parallel to the lens gets focused to a single point, well, then light that's at that focus point should be refracted all parallel to itself. We've seen this idea before with mirrors, but now we're just gonna look at it with lenses, all right? And so if I take my little screen, okay, I see it, you just get this ball of light, and as I move the screen backwards and forwards, the size of the ball of light, it doesn't change at all. So just to try to show you this, I have, uh, this is the diverging lens we're gonna work with here in a minute, but it's the same diameter as the converging lens. And so if I put this on, you can see that the, the little ball of light is right about the diameter of the lens, which is exactly what you'd expect that the light coming through the lens is all just being refracted in a straight line. If I take and I bring this down over here, okay, you can see that if I put the lens on, the ball of light is still the same size, okay, because the light is neither diverging nor converging. Now, out here, you do see along the edges, you see some color banding um, in that typical uh, spectrum pattern with red on one side and the blue-violet on the other. That's because the edges of the converging lens are thin enough, they come together to where they almost just look like, to, to the light, like a triangular prism. So you're actually getting a little bit of light separation there too. Um, but the point is, is that because we now have the light source at the focal length, the light that comes through is all refracted parallel so that ball never gets any bigger. All right, so we never get an image. In fact, the, the only reason I really have the little ghost card on here is just because it's really, really bright and hard to see what's going on. Um, in the camera lens. And then last but not least, you can't see it now because the, the camera doesn't work that well with it, with it being dark, but so I'm gonna pick it up. You can actually see down here on the other end of the basement, and I'm blocking it. Okay, there's that ball of light hitting the wall all the way on the other side of the basement. So it really does just keep going in that straight line uh, all parallel to itself when, when the light passes through the lens when it originates at the focal point. So pretty neat. All right, so I've jumped back to the original setup from the lab, except I've taken the, the convex converging lens out and we're gonna take it and we're gonna replace it with this concave diverging lens. So the diverging lens, uh, its behavior is a little bit different. You can see that the shape is concave. If I hold it in the middle here, you can see Okay, probably the tips of my fingers disappear because it actually curves inwards. And you saw this at the beginning of the lab too. This is what we get in terms of an image. All right, so let's get this up on the lab setup. Take a look. All right, I've gone ahead and just mounted the lens up on the little stand. We're still using the little, the little ghost card. And so I'm gonna start with the card far away from the lens. So pretty, pretty large object distance. All right. All right, lights are off. Diverging lens is in the stand. And if you take a look here, if I move the, the card back and forth, I get a whole bunch of nothing. All right, so I'm just gonna take and shift the object forward here. Oops, see the light kind of bleeding through. All right, so the object is a lot closer now. If I take the card and move it back and forth, 
Okay, you can see I get a whole bunch of nothing on the card. And then finally, just, just so you can see it, I'm gonna shift the object really, really close. Okay, so diverging lenses, they have focal lengths too, and we're certainly inside of it. Um, just so we can see that even if I'm inside the focal length, okay, I get a whole bunch of nothing on the card. So no images can be produced on the screen when light passes through or an object, or light coming from an object passes through the diverging lens. But, All right, so just like when we did this with the converging lens, it's easier for us to look through the lens with the lights on. So I've done that. I've turned the, the light bulb off. I didn't really need to shift the ghost though because we'll see with the diverging lens, we get the same idea as we got with the diverging mirror in that we get a much wide, wider field of view. Okay, so I can actually, if I look through here, this is kind of neat. I can see the, the bottom of the ghost, that circle, it's a lot smaller, it's right side up too. And, and if I compare the size of the lettering, I think it becomes really obvious what we're looking at here, which is an image that's right side up and smaller than the object is because we are dealing with the diverging lens. One of the properties of the diverging lens is that only virtual images are produced. They're always right side up um, and they are always smaller. So even if I take and I shift the ghost back, okay, the, the image is always gonna be smaller than the object. So let me just go ahead and move this back and I'll just show you that real fast. All right, so I just took and shifted the object back pretty far. So then if we just take a peek through the lens, okay, we can see both the image through the lens and the object on the camera clearly right side up, much smaller than before, only visible when looking through the lens, which means we're looking at a virtual image because that's the only kind of image that you can get with the diverging lens. And they always have this pr same properties of right side up, virtual, smaller than the real thing. All right, this is Mr. Zizak coming to you from the basement in the dark, all alone, saying thanks for watching this edition of Physics Underground. We'll see you next time.